wonderful people. How exactly does Tesla's death ray work? I think I know. Hi, welcome back to a very exciting subject. How exactly, in layman's terms, did Nikola Tesla's so-called death ray actually work? As a science researcher, I wanted to know. I'm also a steam engine fan. I didn't want it to be just theory. The practicality, the nitty gritty of shooting down an aircraft at 250 mile range with a ray gun it just doesn't make any sense and that's the interesting point we've all heard of this guy mr arnold flying around probably in his ironica champ over mount rainier in washington state Mr. Arnold saw luminous crescent-shaped clouds moving over each other round Mount Rainier. After he landed, he told a friend who worked for the newspaper about the clouds skipping. Now, you have to remember, newspapers are printed and they have headlines, often two words, RG, bargy, or whatever. So Arnold's story about luminous crescent-shaped clouds skipping around got turned into flying saucers. It's not even close. Why wasn't it luminous cloud spotted? But no, that's the origin of flying saucers. Two words as a banner headline. And there's another classic case of that, and that's the Big Bang. <laughs> So there are two competing theories about the so-called origin of our universe. Cambridge University astronomer and professor Martin Ryle thought the universe was expanding, and so back in time it was smaller, possibly to a single point, which would have expanded. So he called his theory the expanding universe from a giant explosion. Ryle's great rival, Fred Hoyle, Interestingly, an atheist didn't like the idea of a creation moment because it raises so many issues. Who did it? Where did they get their stuff? Do they shop at Astor a little? You know, it, what is a deity? So Hoyle hated, literally, with passion, Ryle's theory of a singularity expanding universe. And Fred Hoyle's alternative was the steady state. The universe had always existed. It didn't need a creator because it's always been here. Silly side note. I noticed that people who don't really like science find the steady state theory more attractive than an explosion theory because it's a bit mind boggling to think what was before there was nothing and it's expanded. But interestingly, those people who don't really like science also, some of them tend to be rather religious and believe in deities. <laughs> and, the, and the truth is that Fred Hoyle was a deeply anti-religious atheist and his steady state was to get round the problem of creation. And he hated the expansion theory so he called it, in a very despising tone, Ryle's Big Bang. Flying saucers. Now we have a two-word headline, Big Bang. That's what goes into the water cooler arguments. And that's what happened with Nikola Tesla's death ray. So, was it a death ray? No! Tesla himself hated the term death ray. And in fact, the term death ray is sloppy science journalism. It never was a death ray. By understanding that it's not a death ray, that might give us a big clue to understand 
What? It really was. Because death rays have an enormous problem. The problem is air. You can't send energy through our air for any great distance because it attenuates any electromagnetic force that you put behind it. Star Wars program knew that, and the only directed energy weapons that they could possibly use was in space where there's no air. So Tesla's death ray, as reported, wouldn't work. It's often illustrated as a ray gun with light or a beam of something. And that's the question, something coming out of it. But Nikola Tesla had an audacious idea. And he wasn't the only person to explore that concept. And there was somebody else who had a similar idea. This brilliant chap called Grindle Matthews, British, worked in Wales and has a very interesting life. I must do a film all about his life. He ended up marrying one of the world's worst opera singers, but that is an aside. What Grindel Matthews realised is that you can't send a beam through the air, but you can send something which changes the air. And he made a very powerful ultraviolet narrow beam, this is before lasers, this is 1920s, and then it ionized a path of air which he could then shoot electricity down. It would follow the ionized path of the UV beam, hit something and destroy it. It actually worked. But Tesla took it a massive step further. So over the last few weeks, I've had the immense pleasure to work with Oliver Nicholson. Oliver, bless his socks, knows his stuff. He is the world's leading Tesla researcher. So back to my steam engines. I asked Oliver, how did Tesla make it work? You know, what was the practical things that Tesla had to build on his lathe in the workshop to make a device that would destroy an airplane at 200 or 250 miles. Oliver knows, and I'm going to tell you today. The first thing you need to know is he called it a teleforce because it wasn't a beam of energy. This is Oliver's, and I'll put it on the screen, illustration of how it worked. Tesla had been working on extremely high electricity fields. You're talking, I mean, really unbelievable. 50 million volts at his workshop in Colorado. Using today what we would call a Van de Graaff generator, Tesla often used a liquid or air circulating in this massive machine that would make a potential difference between the earth, the ground, and the ball at the top. And he increased it, increased it, increased it to 50 million volts. Normal stuff starts breaking down at those type of energies. That's how Cockroft in the Rutherford lab cracked the atom using a Tesla accelerator. So I really want to understand how this Tesla device worked. He took it very seriously and thought it would cause world peace if every nation had it. So Tesla, very much on purpose, didn't restrict giving his defense weapon to the United States where he was living or to his favorite allies. No, he gave it to everybody. This giant generating station, and he envisaged maybe half a dozen down the east coast of the US or surrounding France or on the coastline of Britain would be producing this massive potential voltage difference, which caused absolutely through normal physics, a bubble of potential. And very interestingly, you know quite often you hear the Tesla death ray goes out to 250 miles. Well, that's a very specific number. That's the size of this field, which emanates and surrounds 
the generating station. Imagine my toy plasma ball is 250 miles in diameter. It's not a bad analogy. In the center is the Van de Graaff generator. As something approaches the outer edge of the sphere, a single filament of charged plasma connects the station to the incoming object. That then produces a plasma wormhole that Tesla could then use to fire a stream of projectiles down. Tesla sent metal projectiles using a linear motor out of a gun which traveled up the charged plasma pipe and poo, 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 hit the incoming airplane, boat, missile, whatever it was. Hi, this is me in the future. Every film that I make, I share with my Patreons first. They get to see an early cut before you in YouTube land get to see it. And they can make suggestions. And one of the things that they said here was really smart. They said, okay, putting my hand on my plasma ball, it's grounded. But how did an airplane connect to a plasma beam with Tesla's Teleforce? Yeah, brilliant suggestion. That's just the kind of smart comments that my patrons make. Come and join us starting from only a dollar a month and get to actually work on these films with me. Now you know, but the gun design is fiendish. This is actually long before Eric Lathwaite and Linear Motors. <laughs> and it was actually long before, but became the birth of the cyclotron. Tesla understood that you could magnetically accelerate up to massive speeds, extremely small particles of metal, anything that was affected by magnetism, and then fire it in a straight line along this charged plasma tube to the incoming aeroplane. And that's what he did. He built this device with a hole. <laughs> here's my hole and here's my device. It's like a vacuum tube with a hole in the end. So there's an anode and a cathode and massive voltages. And the cathode is tungsten wire, a bit like a MIG welder, or pressurized mercury. When the metal was fed into this hollow vacuum tube with air at the end, it accelerated and came out like a beam. How did he make a vacuum tube with a hole in the end? And that's what I've been making on my lathe. It's really not that hard and it's absolutely brilliant. What Tesla did was make a vacuum tube with enormous vacuum inside and an enormous air pressure at the hull. So effectively making an airlock. Vacuum on one side, high pressure air and normal atmospheric air on the other. The pressure of the high pressure air and the vacuum were balanced, so making a window that things could pass out of, but effectively the tube was electrically sealed. So an airplane comes along, bursts the bubble, 250 mile radius bubble. A plasma tube of electricity comes up and touches wherever these projectiles come in, a bit like a plasma ball. The metal gun accelerates and then fired, projecting high energy, minute few atoms of mercury or tungsten as bullets boom, 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 down the plasma tube and destroying the aircraft. That would work. That's how the Tesla so-called and he hated death ray and he called 
Kelly for us. Really worked. Thank you so much, Oliver Nicholson. I now know, and I've shared with you, how the Tesla death ray in principle might have worked. There's more to understand. But let's just go over it again. It's not a death ray. It's not electromagnetic radiation coming out of a beam like a space weapon. It was projected particles of metal being fired along a tube of electricity of plasma ionized air to whatever burst the shielded bubble of potential electricity generated by a Van de Graaff generator. Got it? The truth is now out there. And in the next episode, whatever happened to Tesla's so-called death ray? Did it dissolve in the mist of time or did it really become a deep, dark weapon system? I have evidence that Britain continued to work on it. America used it for Star Wars. Russia actually built an entire Tesla system. And I speak to a man who knows about liquid metal projectiles. Stay tuned. <laughs>